Hello and welcome to the EduTalk Diabetes Series, hosted by EZ, Biotone, and diabetes health and wellness experts. With the daily challenges of diabetes and interest in health and wellness strategies, the EduTalk Diabetes Series supports building your wellness community by connecting you with diabetes health experts who share their knowledge and expertise on topics of concern to provide you the tools and resources to support and manage a healthy lifestyle. Today's expert is Nathan Lesh, the lead nurse practitioner at Flight Medical, powered by IntelliHealth. He's a seasoned family nurse practitioner specializing in obesity and diabetes care. Nathan has over 16 years of healthcare experience and excels in managing complex metabolic health conditions, driving digital transformation and improving patient outcomes. He's renowned for commitment to quality, improvement and innovation in care delivery. Let's listen and learn as Nathan explains how to prevent diabetes-related amputations with effective foot care. He'll share the alarming rise in lower limb amputations linked to diabetes and how to take control of foot health, not only for yourself, but for those you care for. Nathan explores vital strategies from lifestyle adjustments to vigilant wound care to safeguard foot health and prevent unnecessary amputations. Earlier today, you received a reminder email with a worksheet that Nathan provided for taking notes during tonight's EduTalk. And with that, please have sound muted, video off, and please feel free to chat questions and comments, which Nathan will answer at the end. And with that, thank you, Nathan. Thank you for joining us. I know we have a lot to cover and I will sign off and see you on the other side of your presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, wonderful introduction. I appreciate that. Um, let me go ahead and, and share my screen and I'll turn it uh, into uh, full screen view here. Um, one second, I'll turn on my notes there. Okay, perfect. Um, before we begin, uh, thanks everybody. Um, you know, before we begin, I want to just start by, uh, it looks like we got a lot of folks from, you know, the East Coast, we got some folks on the West Coast, so I really appreciate everybody being here. Um, I like to kind of start these activities, kind of understand who's, why folks are here, why we're, we're interested about um, the topic at hand tonight. And so in the chat box, um, kind of think about, you know, if you can put in what, what drew you to the talk tonight, don't, don't enter it yet. I wanna, I wanna give folks a, a moment just to think about that. And then on the count of three, we can, we can all enter in why we're here and you can see that kind of cascading uh, waterfall effect in the chat's kind of neat. So, you know, in a word or two or three, kind of risks, uh, tell us why, you, what brought you to the, the talk tonight and what you're interested in learning about or what, what's drew you to here. And then on the count of three, we can all enter in that um, thing together. We can kind of see that cascade in the, in the chat. Give folks a few minutes to put their comment in the chat. And then on the count of three, we can all click enter and we can see that those uh, responses come through. Okay, one, two, three. Go ahead and enter your your response. Why you why you're here? Great, that's awesome. No, thank you so much. That's great. This will help me kind of guide the presentation. Make sure that we have really good um, things for folks who um, work with folks with diabetes, live with diabetes, have other. Um, connections to diabetes and, and brought them here tonight. So that's awesome. Yeah, fantastic case managers. That's great. Um, so a little bit more about myself. You know, I have a, I've been working historically in uh, primary care and really became a specialist in diabetology and specialized in diabetes 
Um, and in my practice in New Braunfels, Texas, uh, the previous seven years, I've been working with folks with diabetes and realizing um, that you know, oftentimes I'm the only one that's looked at their feet. They haven't had another primary care provider or an endocrinologist or anyone kind of looking at their feet and realizing there's some things going on down there that put them at higher risk for amputations, put them at higher risk for infections, complications. And we know that um, you know it, it's something that's often overlooked. We know that it's it's kind of a, a, a you know uncomfortable at times. Take off your shoes in a in a clinic, but uh, but no, these are really important things we need to be doing with with all of our patients with type two diabetes. Um, and you're wondering why in 2023 are we still you know amputating appendages on people, right? Um, and and that's not happening all over the world. It's it's really happening in the United States at a large uh, degree. We can talk about that in a moment, but um, but there uh, other other countries are, are are not having the same kind of risk uh, of amputations with their patients with diabetes, and a lot of that has to do with prevention and, and access to care. Um, and so we can talk about kind of how we can prevent some of these strategies um, going into uh, tonight. Um, so let's bring us to uh, kind of the agenda for tonight. So we uh, are gonna start off by talking a little bit about diabetes and what, what the state of diabetes in the United States is and foot health in the United States, what the, the research has shown in the, in the risk of amputations uh, recently and the, the increase there, there has been um, and why diabetes can and how diabetes can cause amputations. And then we'll look at the guidelines from the American Diabetes Association on what patients should expect from their care providers on good, on good preventive care. Uh, and then also what the, the ADA, the American Diabetes Association and the CDC recommend for good patient education to prevent um, amputations, prevent complications from diabetes, right? Um, and then we'll have some time at the end for the questions. So, you know, please uh, ask me any questions you have uh, and we can kind of go over all those at the end of our discussion tonight. Um, so what, uh, so right now there's about 37 million Americans with type two diabetes in America. Um, that's about 11% of our population. One in five don't know they have type two diabetes, right? And so that's, uh, that's a problem for, for folks if they're, you know, not knowing they have diabetes that puts them at higher, higher risk for complications, right? Furthermore, we know that there's about 96 million Americans with prediabetes, that's one in three Americans. And most of them don't know they have prediabetes, but that uh, puts them at higher risk for developing type two diabetes, along with developing other complications like heart disease and strokes um, that, that we wanna prevent, right? Um, and so of the, the, the lower extremity amputations, we know that that's kind of a key uh, measure of how well we as providers and as patients are partnering together to control their blood sugars, their diabetes. And so, um, you know, it, it's in, involving, you know, blood sugar control, cardiovascular risk reduction, kind of early identification of these um, complications and good patient education and self-care, kind of daily things that they can do to prevent this from happening, right? Um, and and the statistics from 2016 kind of say, say that, you know, 4.9 uh, amputations per 1,000 adults is what were occurring. Um, and this is uh, 130,000 hospitalizations related to um, amputations, right? And I just want to pause here and just kind of remind folks like with these, this uh, diabetes and, and obesity, these are very stigmatized disorders, right? There's a lot of um, stigma and, and uh, you know, uh, bias, even in healthcare and healthcare providers and in, the, in our population around these um, conditions. And so um, uh, sometimes it's, it's, it's really important to talk about that because we want to make sure that folks feel comfortable and, and we want to utilize language that promotes inclusivity, right? And humanizing. So, you know, we used to use terms like di diabetics. We used to use terms like obese, um, but we don't use those terms anymore. And that's important to kind of understand. We want to utilize terms that are humanizing, that are per uh, person first. And so we talk about patients with diabetes, diabetes related complications, and uh, patients with obesity, as opposed uh, to those other kind of more stigmatizing um, terms, right? And so um, part of, uh, you know, talking about diabetes is talking about kind of all the pieces, right? The stigma, the, you know, the shame that may be a, a part of that. Um, 
and it doesn't have to be that way, right? And so we want to really kind of shed some light on that as well. Um, but looking at the the rise, right? We know that uh, there has been a rise since 2009. There's been over 62% um, increase in the rate of uh, minor non-traumatic lower extremity amputations and a 29% increase in major amputations. Um, this is happening mostly in men, uh, in adult men, 18 to 64. Um, but not all countries are experiencing this. And so, um, you know, part of uh, that rise is important because we want to make sure that this doesn't continue, right? And so that's what we're here tonight to talk about. And we know that with good um, foot care, you know, annual foot exams and uh, patient education, we can prevent 85% of amputations from occurring, okay? Um, but before we do that, we want to understand what, what causes diabetes-related amputations. Why? Uh, is this still happening, right? Well, we know that peripheral neuropathy, peripheral arterial disease, and foot ulcers and infections are kind of the leading um, reasons we need to do amputations on folks. Um, and so what is peripheral neuropathy? Well, the peripheral neuropathy is uh, the leading cause of foot ulcers in patients with diabetes. Um, it's when high sugar or glucose in the blood spills out into the periphery and damages the, the Schwann cells, the peripheral nerve uh, cells, and that reduces the sensation in the, in the nerves of the lower legs and hands um, and it increases the risk for injury, right? If you're walking, you can't feel the pressure that's maybe building up on your heel or you can't feel the thing that you might've just stepped on. You can, you can cause trauma there and that can turn into infection and, and not heal, right? Um, peripheral artery disease is where, um, you know, high blood sugar causes inflammation in the, the lining of the arteries of the, of the uh, of the legs and other areas in the body. Um, and that inflammation causes plaque to develop. Um, and that plaque can rupture, can break off, can clot, and cause further narrowing of the arteries in the lower legs, other appendages in the body, and reduce the blood flow. And when you reduce the blood flow to those areas, you reduce the amount of uh, red blood cells and, and white blood cells and, and things that can heal and protect and, and, and you put that uh, area of the body at higher risk for poor wound healing and increased risk for infections, right? And so ultimately ulcers, foot ulcers um, or infections, if gone untreated, can get worse and, and, and are unable to heal because of the low blood flow. And there has to be some change in treatment and whether we amputate or look at other modalities. But um, you know, ultimately we wanna preserve the limbs as best we can. There are still today reasons we are gonna need to have to you know, take that that limb away and and stop the infection and and cut the limb at a higher place where there's better blood supply, better sensitivity, so that foot that area of damage can heal. Okay, um, so what are the guidelines? What what should patients with diabetes expect? Right. Um, so the American Diabetes Association says that you know all individuals uh, with diabetes, whether they're um, at high risk of developing diabetes or well controlled or not well controlled with their blood sugars should all be getting yearly foot examinations, right? Your primary care provider, your endocrinologist, your podiatrist should be looking at your feet once a, a year at a minimum. Um, and that assessment should include um, the integrity, looking at the skin integrity, looking for signs of, of ulceration or, or infection, looking for signs of peripheral arterial disease, um, uh, looking, uh, assessing for loss of protective sensation, um, and they do that by utilizing a little uh, filament and touching the bottom of your foot when you're not looking, and they can you know, tell them if you can you can feel that. Um, and then checking the pulses, putting your, your fingers on the pulses of the lower feet to see that there's good, strong blood flow coming through the foot, and assessing for foot deformities, uh, assessing for any structural abnormalities in the foot. And the American Diabetes Association has put together this kind of chart to show that if you have some of these characteristics, you should be getting actually more frequent checks of your feet to be preventative and proactive. And if you have peripheral arterial disease, signs of that, you need to be referred to a vascular specialist for ultrasounds to make sure that there's not any uh, blockages occurring. Um, and if you're you know, having some foot deformities or foot um, you know, uh, changes, they need to be sent to a podiatrist to have uh, that be evaluated more frequently as well, right? There's a lot of things we can do to prevent um, uh, complications from diabetes. And so early intervention is really what's needed. And so early and often kind of assessment and evaluation is what we're really trying to advocate for. Um, 
And there's things that we can do now that we used to not be able to do, specifically for peripheral arterial disease, medications we can take to reduce the, the, the pain, the symptoms of peripheral arterial disease and improve the blood supply, and improve the blood flow to the lower limb and reduce the risk of complications, right? Um, so uh, very important to understand. But uh, on top of that, we need to know kind of who's at higher risk. So, you know, if we're doing this for everybody, um, what else, uh, who, who should be kind of identified as people that may be at higher risk? Well, we know from the UK PBS study that for every 1% reduction in A1C, hemoglobin A1C, the, the blood sugars for the last three months, um, there's a 37% risk reduction in microvascular complications. So microvascular complications in type 2 diabetes include retinopathy, so damage to the eye, nephropathy, damage to the kidney, and then peripheral neuropathy, damage to the nerves, right? Um, and so if we uh, can keep your the blood sugar levels below 7%, and that's what the ADA has defined, the uh, American College of uh, Clinical Endocrinologists, as uh, 6.5% uh, as the A1C cutoff, lower than those levels, we're reducing the risk of complications from diabetes. And so working with the healthcare provider to really make sure that you're keeping those blood sugars controlled and getting good access to care is really important for preventing risk, right? Obviously, peripheral neuropathy, peripheral arterial disease, as we discussed, the foot deformities, as we discussed, and we'll talk more uh, in a moment on some of those. And then um, prior ulcerization, prior uh, amputations, and, and even smoking. So vaping, smoking, that puts you at higher risk for developing peripheral arterial disease, but also for wound healing and infections, okay? Um, and so some of the, the foot deformities that we want to kind of highlight for folks that you're seeing in these things in your practice, um, you know, really want to make sure that folks are getting to be seen by a podiatrist for these things, right? Um, you know, hammer toe is on the left where they're uh, the second, third, and fourth digit um, get kind of flexed and, and permanently fixed in a, in a flexed position. Uh, and that puts inappropriate pressure on, the, on the, the ball of the toe there. And that can develop into an ulcer if you can't feel that pressure building up, right? Um, same thing with corns and calluses. These are um, kind of the same thing, but on different parts of the foot. The corn is on the top of the toes and that's with repetitive um, pressure or um, friction that can occur. And it's just kind of a small, hard little nodule. Calluses on the, usually the side or the bottom of the soles of the feet little larger, softer, same thing, though repetitive kind of pressure can develop into those and they can turn into ulcers in the, in the, uh, over time. Um, and then uh, bunions are, are kind of that bony prominence that occurs when the, the big toe joint kind of gets um, moved forward, cause a lot of discomfort, but folks would have peripheral neuropathy may not feel that and the toe can rub against the, the second um, uh, toe there and cause some ulceration and some irritation there. So, you know, Things that you're seeing that like this, we want to make sure that they're getting good podiatry care, preventative care to make sure that these things don't get worse uh, for folks, right? Um, another thing that is more rare, but but definitely something that I've diagnosed and, and see in practice occasionally um, is uh, this, what we call Charcot foot or Charcot arthropathy. Um, it is um, named at, after Jean Martin Charcot, who identified it in 1868, but this is where there's some fractures that occur in the foot um, and the fractures don't heal and the patient doesn't feel the fractures and they kind of fuse together and can cause a lot of dis, uh, dysregulation in the foot, having um, you know, bony fragments to occur, to some changes in the way the foot looks and feels, and it can actually cause some deformity at the bottom of the foot. Oftentimes these folks present with an ulcer at the bottom of the foot um, and, and we don't realize uh, until they, they come into the clinic that they actually have this deformity. We have to get an x-ray or an MRI to confirm that this is what's happening. Um, but this is where folks, they, they don't feel their, the, the changes happening in the foot and over time this can occur. Um, and so we wanna make sure they get seen by a podiatrist. We wanna make sure they get uh, or special orthotics, special shoes um, made for them. And, and we do very frequent foot care with the podiatrist uh, through every three months being seen by a podiatry typically to make sure that the, any wounds get, get uh, fixed, any pressure points get alleviated with uh, the orthotic and they don't um, have to have any further um, complications from this. But if you're seeing folks with uh, kind of a bigger um, foot that looks um, more flat in the middle um, and, and is kind of warm to the touch, swollen, um, these folks definitely need to be seen um, if they haven't already, right? You want to make sure that they're getting in to see either their primary care to look at the foot 
uh, or, or if not a podiatrist, right? Um, but 70% of these do develop ulcers and, and, and uh, oftentimes they, they may need uh, amputations to preserve the rest of their uh, limb. Um, and then peripheral artery disease, and this is uh, kind of a classic example of that, where you have kind of the skin changes where you get kind of that shiny, um, kind of dry skin look with no hair that's growing, kind of a, a poor uh, nail growth, uh, no hair, um, cold extremity that um, may have pain with walking or uh, walking around. They may have some calf pain, foot pain. Uh, when you touch those pulses in the foot, you don't really feel much, right? Um, and you get some of this kind of spider vein and kind of vascularity because the body's trying to increase the blood supply to that area, but the arteries are so um, narrow that it, it's really having difficulty doing that, right? Um, erectile dysfunction can be a, a sign of this, um, uh, sores that don't heal, um, you know, things, that, uh, feet that kind of get uh, easily uh, injured with uh, cuts and such um, can be signs of that as well. And so those folks that present this way really need, need to get a uh, vascular specialist, need to get an ultrasound of their leg and, and need to be kind of promptly treated with medications and, and actively surveillanced with um, routine uh, you know, checks by their vascular specialist to prevent further kind of complications and, and, and ongoing foot care, right? Um, and so uh, talk a little bit now about you know, what we can do to prevent um, you know, this from, from happening, right? We know from the literature that you know, uh, just a 5% body weight reduction um, if you have type 2 diabetes, really reduces your risk for, you know, all of these complications, reduces the risk of needing insulins, reduce it, re needing other medications. And this is what I kind of do in my day to day practice, right? Um, I started my practice with di diabetes and now I'm still treating folks with diabetes, but also working more specifically on um, helping them with their weight. Um, the American Diabetes Association here in the last uh, year recommended to finally start treating folks um, for their weight as a chronic condition. And that's what we do. We, we treat um, obesity and weight as a chronic condition with medications, um, exercise and diet. And that combination reduces the risk for developing worsening diabetes, the complications of diabetes, and also reduces their risk of coronary artery disease, uh, heart attack strokes, um, uh, cancers, and, and, and all of those things, right? Um, we, the American Diabetes Association has also recommended kind of a really balanced diet with fruits and vegetables and whole grains. They haven't really, you know, said one diet is better than the other. We know from the re research that kind of all, 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 there's a lot of great things in all the different diets, vegetarianism, uh, uh, Mediterranean, low glycemic eating, um, but, but definitely reducing the processed sugars, the, the high fructose corn syrups, some of those inflammatory foods that can worsen your sugar level and in and reduce, uh, it can kind of put you at a higher risk for uh, inflammation in the body, right? Um, and we know from the research that um, regular physical activity, um, 150 minutes a week is kind of the sweet spot in the literature for how much we need to kind of reduce our risk for complications from diabetes and prevent diabetes even from occurring. Um, and, you know, we recommend some, you know, you know, aerobic exercise, walking, running, bicycling, swimming, but also doing some strength-based activities as well, like yoga, Pilates, uh, weightlifting, just to kind of improve the insulin resistance, help out with the metabolic um, uh, metabolism uh, of, our, of our food and our bodies and allow for further kind of continued uh, weight loss over time. And then obviously we recommend avoiding smoking, vaping, uh, limiting alcohol consumption. These things uh, not only put us at higher risk for complications with diabetes, but actually work against us in terms of helping us lose weight and keep that weight off long-term. Um, and then obviously partnering with a great primary care provider. What you want to have a partner in this, uh, you know, if you are a patient with diabetes, you want to have a good partner to walk along the road with, uh, feel comfortable with, you know, taking your shoes off in front of, and, and really feel like you're getting well, um, well supported in your in your care, right? So with annual foot examinations, referrals, kind of preventatively seeing the eye doctor and the orth orthopedist and the uh, excuse me the podiatrist and the and the dentist, kind of regularly getting um, regular blood work to check your hemoglobin A one C, your chemistry and your cholesterol, the lipid panel, um, checking your blood pressure and and doing uh, foot 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 checks uh, for the pulses, make sure that you have great pulses in your feet, 
and discussing weight management strategies. Now, not all primary care and endocrinologists are, um, you know, specialized in helping people lose weight, but you know, there are those services like like Flight Medical, the, the place that I work, that we can help with. Right, we treat patients with diabetes and uh, their weight, and we can uh, really do a great job at reducing their blood pressure, reducing their cholesterol, and other medications that they're taking. Because when you treat patients' weight, it kind of treats all the other comorbid conditions, all the other um, things that their their body is going through. Uh, and so, having a great partner on that is super important. Um, in terms of um, you know education, uh, we recommend you know daily foot care, um, and this is backed up by the CDC and the American Diabetes Association that you know whether you have uh, well controlled diabetes or you know uncontrolled diabetes, or if you're at high risk or, or not high risk, this is just great kind of daily care to kind of think about wearing comfortable shoes, uh, not going barefoot, uh, inspecting your feet uh, regularly, keeping your feet clean and dry using moisturizers to kind of keep your uh, feet uh, from developing cracks or fissures and, and, and avoiding this dry skin. Um, and then trimming your nails straight across and not kind of rounding them off to avoid ingrown toenails um, and never trying to do surgery on your own feet with uh, anything to remove calluses or corns or take off any ingrown toenails, right? You really want to make sure that uh, if you're having changes in the feet, you see a healthcare professional. And so tingling, burning, pain in the feet, uh, any cramping, in the legs or the calves or the foot with walking or, or any activity. Um, change in the color, the temperature, the shape of the feet, any hair loss that you're noticing in the feet, um, loss of sensation or thickening or yellow toenails, any kind of infection blister thing. We really wanna make sure that you're um, getting seen properly by a healthcare professional. And not just letting that kind of heal on its own, but really getting somebody to take a look at that. Um, particularly if you have type two diabetes and particularly if you have um, higher risk, right? Um, and so, uh, you know, that's oftentimes we say, yeah, you know, I thought it was going to get better and it's really has it. Um, and it kind of progresses. And, and so that's a great time to kind of say, hey, you know, this this needs to be seen by a healthcare professional. So we really want to be proactive and preventative as much as we can with, with any things that are happening in our feet um, to avoid some of these complications. And so talking to our family members, talking to our clients or our uh, our loved ones about you know are are you getting the you know good good preventative care with your primary care are you getting them to take a look at your feet uh, and are they are they taking a look at them, their own feet right and so um, yeah that that's really kind of the staples for how we can prevent um, the complications of type two diabetes and really uh, stop the amputations from occurring right um, and what what I do at, at Flight Medical is really we do a holistic look at the blood work and the, um, the past medical history, family history, to really put them on a route to, uh, to help them with not just the diabetes, but with all of their health conditions and improve that by helping folks lose weight and keep weight off long-term. We understand that weight is a chronic condition. It's much more complicated than, than just diet and exercise. And so we take a very uh, holistic approach and treat weight as a chronic condition. Um, and you know, from from the the research, we know that if we can uh, prevent folks from developing type two diabetes um, or putting them in remission and having their A one Cs go back down below that five point seven percent, we know that that's where you're going to have the least amount of complications, the least risk for infections and complications from the diabetes. And so that's kind of the bulk of what I do now is is help people not only prevent diabetes, but if they have diabetes, really revert it back to a place where they're having normal glycemia, normal blood sugar levels um, throughout their, their day. Um, and so, yeah, I, I think, uh, you know, I'll stop there and uh, we can kind of open it up for, for questions um, and, uh, and go from there. Well, thank you, Nathan and everyone, please feel free to chat questions or comments. Um, you know, it's, it's, so refreshing to hear what we can do on a daily basis to monitor our health and well-being of our feet and um, to just keep an eye on these things. And it's amazing the more I learn about diabetes, how, you know, one thing connects to the next thing to the next thing and your health your health is falling apart on many levels 
And if that can be reversed and prevented, um, to have these guidelines, I mean, they are simple little tips that don't take a lot of time. But exactly. it's, it's investing in your own health to take note of what your body is doing and um, then take action on preventing or caring for the health. And, totally. and in the chat, I just put in uh, kind of the CDC guidelines. And from there, there's a lot of great, you know, tips and handouts and things you can give for your patients, your, your clients. Um, if you see things and you, you know, you want to just kind of let them know, hey, uh, this, this may be helpful for you, right? Um, we want to kind of spread the word that, that uh, you know, foot health doesn't need to be uh, a, a taboo or any kind of weird uh, thing. We want to make sure that people are looking at at feed regularly and 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 being proactive in that. Um, and so the CDC has got some really good infographics and really good guidelines and and things to share with patients, loved ones, um, just to kind of give them more support in a more patient centric um, uh, kind of uh, you know way. Okay, um, but yeah. Well, thank you for um, adding that to chats. I um, tomorrow, everyone, you'll receive a follow up email. And check junk mail if you don't see it by the afternoon or your spam folder. Um, Nathan, I will include this link in the follow-up with a recording. And again, I'll attach the worksheet uh, to the follow-up email and Nathan's contact information through his website will be in tomorrow's follow-up. There is still time for comments or questions. And we'd love to see more. Um, in chats, I would like to say that uh, a few of the names I recognize here attending our Edu Talk Diabetes Series tonight are in the massage profession, and they um, having these guidelines for what to look for um, could be very helpful for them in assisting their their clients and their. Um, to maintain a better health. And totally. I, I, I see Marguerite has a massage t-shirt on there. So maybe, <laughs> maybe she has some feedback from massage sessions and being able to check people's feet and encouraging them to see a professional or, or look into wow. this further. Um, yeah. Uh massage therapists are in a very unique position to kind of do their own foot exam, right? I mean, you're, you're, you're touching their feet when you're doing massages. And so if you have an intake form where they're, you're asking if they have type two diabetes, that would be great. And then you see that there's, you know, some changes in the lower foot that are concerning and that we've outlined tonight. I mean, that's great to kind of think about referring them back to their primary care, referring them to podiatry or um, talking to them about that or handing out just the CDC guidelines, you know, that'd be kind of a neat way just to not, not make it, uh, you know, too, uh, uh, you know, put too much pressure on you, but just, you know, hand that out as part of your kind of recommendations. Part, part of the self-education. Um, some chats did come in. So Rebecca is asking, and I'm not sure of one of these terms, how do you feel about MBRS going to podiatrists weekly once they have a wound or diabetic ulcer. I have had a couple that were doing that and still had toes amputated. I don't know what MBRS is. MBRS. Um, oh, sorry. Is that, uh... Uh, it's uh, Rebecca does case studies. And let's see. We yeah, say what's, members what's in members instead of oh, patients. Oh, members. Oh, so that's, okay. Members. Thank you, Rebecca. MBRS is members. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Um, yeah, that's a great question. How do I feel about uh, members going to podiatrists weekly once they have their wound diabetic ulcer? Um, yeah, yeah. So there, you know, oftentimes you you want to make sure, and everyone's everywhere is kind of different. So there's a lot of great things they can do now for ulcers and wounds. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, some pressure treatments, uh, there's some great new 
therapies that they can do. Oftentimes they do require them to go weekly to the podiatrist, but oftentimes the podiatrist isn't always the best person to be seen if they have a, a diabetic, or excuse me, a, a, an ulcer related to diabetes, right? Um, and so a wound care specialist is really who those folks need to be seen. And so really advocate that they see a wound care specialist. There's actually special certifications that nurse practitioners, physicians, physicians assistants can get that qualify them as specific to working with patients with diabetes who have wounds. And they utilize a lot more different types of treatments than just podiatrists. Podiatrists kind of do all things. They, they do surgery, they do um, orthotics, they do um, kind of everything. Unless that podiatrist specializes in diabetes, um, we really want to have them see a wound specialist. The wound specialists tend to work at hospitals, but they also have outpatient clinics that they'll see patients at. Um, and they'll have specialization behind their name that makes them credible to be seeing uh, patients um, for their wounds, right? So bari uh, there's um, uh, barometric uh, chambers we can use to reduce the pressures and help with um, uh, wound healing. There's, there's new... Uh, there's a lot of new things in peripheral arterial disease to improve blood flow. We, we do a lot of stents to help people improve their blood flow. We put patients on um, certain blood thinners to improve their blood flow and reduce their risk for developing worsening uh, uh, blood flow in the foot. Having their cholesterol well controlled will also help with that. So yeah, hopefully that helps uh, Rebecca, but yeah, um, you know, podiatrists are, are great and sometimes they're not always the best person to be uh, working on the, the wounds themselves. And so that's a good point. Um, podiatrists can help with orthotics and help with take the pressure off and a lot of the wounds. But once a patient has a, a wound that's related to their diabetes and it's not healing, we do recommend they see a specific wound specialist um, that has a, has a, it does this kind of all the time, right? Works with patients with diabetes all the time. Because there's a lot involved in the wound healing, blood sugar control, blood pressure control, cholesterol control, um, and, and nutrition, uh, and nutrition, proper nutrition as well, um, and activity that they can do to kind of help facilitate some of those wounds to heal quicker and avoid amputation, right? That's the whole point. We really want to avoid as much as we can amputation, but I'll stop there. Other questions that folks have on any of that? Well, I have a question. Sure. Um, when AC1 numbers go down, when you're controlling that better, does that uh, help reduce the risks involved? Totally, yes, yep. So every 1% reduction, so if your A1C is eight and you go to A1C of seven after three months, you reduce your risk for you know, uh, change, uh, damage to the eye, damage to the kidneys, damage to the nerves by over 37%. And so, yeah. Every number we can get below that 7%, you're just reducing your risk for bad complications. And that also includes the macro complications. So the macrovascular complications are heart attacks and strokes, right? Um, and so those, um, we definitely really want to uh, increase, uh, reduce for sure. Um, so yeah, you're exactly right. And, and you know, nowadays, we, we, you know, we, we want to get it below 7. We want to get that A1C below 6.5, but we can really actually go further. And we know that um, it's safe to actually reduce blood sugars even lower and reduce further any complications. All right. Um, Rebecca is saying, thank you. That's what I thought to, taught too. I recommend to talk to her doctor and the podiatrist got mad. She had wounds before <laughs> they that healed and this times ended up with an amputation. So I yeah. just want to make sure that encouraging patients to talk with their doctors about going to a wound care center, a wound center was right. You're, you're exactly right. Yep, you know, um, a lot of folks, you know, want to help and, and sometimes uh, they, they they maybe had success with certain folks in the past, but if, if patients aren't improving, they really need to get a second opinion, right? And this happens all the time. And it's nothing that anybody should take personally. We really want to make sure we're doing the best uh, care for the patient. Um, and so getting a second opinion is always a great idea. Always to get more eyes on somebody is better than not. And so if there's any question about, well, this wound isn't really healing as fast as the last wound healed, or you know, um, this feels different for some reason, yeah, let's get a second opinion. Let's have a wound specialist take a look at that. Um, and it's nothing 
personal about the podiatrist. We just want to make sure we're doing whatever we can for the patient, right? So you did the exact right thing. Well, thank you, Nathan. And I would like to mention to everyone that on the ease, ease-zinc.com website that sponsors the EduTalk Diabetes Series, there is an EduTalk tab there with an archive library. And we launched in May, but Nathan t- touched upon some of the topics that we've already presented and recorded. So simple movement exercise. Um, We also uh, presented on um, more than carbs at meal planning. So there are some, even though there are not many, we have um, rounded up some good presenters and great topics. And with that, uh, Nathan, I would just, like to ask you if oh and again um the archive library is at ease-zinc.com under the edutalk tab and nathan do you have any last words in wrapping up uh no yeah i just encourage folks if they know patients who are struggling with their weight or struggling with their diabetes and need a second opinion or want to be seen um, by somebody who uh, I'm a certified diabetes educator, also cert- cert- board certified in advanced diabetes management and, and weight loss, um, you know, go to joinflight.com. We are in all the states. We are a telemedicine company and we um, can see folks in the comfort of their homes uh, all across the United States, uh, taking a lot of all the insurances as well. So joinflight.com, uh, you can uh, sign up and uh, see me there. But uh, Yeah, thank you. It was a pleasure, uh, and uh, I hope uh, this was helpful. Yeah, definitely. Very, very informative. And in closing, please join us in October, October 17th. We will have Jimmy Gaelis with Massage Considerations for Diabetic Patients. And then November 14th, uh, right before the start of the holiday season, we'll have Linda Lockett-Brown, Don't Let Diabetes Define Your Holidays. So those were two um, excellent um, talks coming up as well. Nathan just posted his website that will be included in the follow-up email tomorrow with a recording link and the worksheet. And... Thank you, everyone, for joining. Thank you, Nathan. Um, We'll look forward to seeing Nathan again present an EduTalk Diabetes Series in 2024. So watch your in-basket for upcoming invitations. And be well, be safe, and thank you for joining us, everyone. Take care, Nathan. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. Have a good night. Bye-bye.